want to thank the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute for sponsoring this video. MMI is a school for motorcycle enthusiasts who want to train for a career in the industry. Click the link above for more information. Alright guys, well we have spent uh, the last couple days riding Suzuki's new V-Strom 800DE here on the island of Sardinia off the coast of Italy. Obviously an idyllic place to come and ride a motorcycle. That said, we've had a chance to really uh, rip around on this thing a little bit more than we usually get, so I'm very happy to, to have had a couple days to do that. All new model for Suzuki, the 776cc platform is uh, obviously coming in with the V-Strom 800DE and also the GSX 8S. Let's take a look at what the bike has. Obviously, like I just said, the parallel twin is new for Suzuki. This is a 776 cc engine, dual overhead cam, four valve per cylinder motor with a 270 degree crank. Obviously this type of engine has become really popular and it really puts traction to the ground really nice, which is why we see them so often in adventure bikes. And this is no different. The, the, the motor works really well. We'll get into that in a little bit though. We've got a 21 inch, 17 inch wheel combo. These are gonna be tube type wheels so uh love it or hate it that's the way it is for this bike we've got show suspension fully adjustable on both ends you got 8.7 inches of travel at both ends with about the same amount of ground clearance big tft display with all sorts of adjustability with abs traction control uh, ride modes these things none of it is imu based so it's a, a a little bit more you know standard and that's all available to switch through the five inch tft display that has the uh, glass mated so it's really easy to see no matter the light so how did it work today we were, we were jumping on and off road for the last two days it's been a great time but i think obviously it, it shouldn't be any surprise that the engine was the first thing to notice. And I, I think Suzuki did a really good job with it. I think the claim is around 84 horsepower and like 57 pound feet of torque. So it's a, a stout engine putting out good power and it really pulls hard across the whole, you know, low, mid, all the way up close to where it signs off, it, it pulls hard. And I, I think it's also, that's gonna make it a great motor for the, the 8S as well, the naked bike. There was sometimes I let the motor lug down a little bit into the RPM range when we were off-road and then wanted to whack the throttle to kind of use the rear end to change the bike's direction for a turn. And it just tractors really well. It puts, it gets the traction to the ground really well with that 270 degree and just the parallel twin design in general. The traction control you can change between a few different modes. They also have a specific G gravel mode, which kind of reins you in a little bit, lets the rear slip out a bit. But at the same time, you know, it, maybe if you're actually touring and you weren't just out for a fun ride, you might want to keep it in G mode to keep yourself reined in a little bit. Make sure you don't uh, override your skill level because you don't want to do that when you're on an actual adventure tour. But for today, I, I kind of preferred turning traction control off again because the motor puts that power to the rear wheel so well that stepping the rear end out is really natural. And I feel like modulating the throttle made it really easy. In terms of ABS, again, not IMU based, not lean sensitive. This is standard ABS. Um, and they have two levels of that that are more meant for the street, you know, inclement weather, whatever. You can have the, the setting that adds uh, more intervention. And again, you can turn it off. And the off mode, which is kind of the standard across the board now with different regulations is on an adventure bike, when you turn it off or into off-road ABS, uh, the front stays on, but the rear is able to shut off, which makes a big deal when you're riding off-road right on loose surfaces. Maybe you want to turn with the rear uh, brake. So that's a great option to have with the bike. When you turn it off with a kill switch, maybe you're stopping on the trail to talk to your friend. It will keep all the settings. If you key the bike off, it'll keep your traction control setting, but the ABS will revert into one or two, a, a standard ABS mode. Ergonomics for me, I'm uh, 5'8", 30 inch end seam. The seat's at 33.7. When you sit on it, it does feel a little tall and the seat's not adjustable. You can buy a low or a high seat, which gets you, I think, like 20 and 30 mil. 
uh, in each direction. For me, I'm used to this kind of stuff. It doesn't bother me at all. But for other people that are a little more worried about seat height, you might want to consider the lower seat. In terms of sitting and riding or standing up and riding, it fits me perfect. The, the tank's a little wide if you're really trying to be aggressive off-road and get up over really over the front wheel. But I found that it's got kind of a good spot to lock your knees into, or if you're turning and you want to kind of push your knees into the, the tank a little bit. I would say most of our pace was uh, not terribly hot. We did get to get into some, some higher pace stuff, both on-road and off-road during our time here. But for kind of a more moderate to even a little accelerated pace, the ergos for me with the tank were really nice. And the bike, it's got a, a steel frame with a bolt-on subframe, as well as a, uh, bolt on passenger pegs so you can take those off if you have no interest in carrying a passenger but the the whole thing is slim enough that it really allowed me to feel comfortable even at high speeds going into a corner kind of sliding and getting out over the bike it just let me move around really well for a person my size you know maybe i'd consider swapping the bars if i wanted to get really aggressive with the bike but as is i'm pretty much okay with it uh, again i think this bike slots in nicely in the whole realm of middleweight adventure bikes in that it provides a motorcycle that's going to be really easy to tour on, on the street and also off-road. Definitely not the most hard edge bike. You know, the, there are other bikes in the category that are purpose-built for being really hard edged for off-road riding and they give up some for, for uh, street riding. I, I think this bike does a good job of, of giving you a little bit of both. And definitely from Suzuki, it's, it's the most off-road focused V-Strom yet. That said, didn't stop anyone from scraping pegs all day and really railing through these tight, nice roads that we have in, uh, here in Sardinia. Again, suspension's adjustable. You have uh, the preload for the shock right here, so it's really easy to get to if you've got a passenger, luggage, whatever. I ended up cranking that up a little bit to get the back end lifted up a little bit. Uh, helped off-road for sure. With this entire setup, it's, it's a much more off-road focused machine than Suzuki has done in the past. And I, I think they kind of knocked it out of the park. The engine makes a lot of sense in this kind of bike. That said, uh, we were told the tune isn't that much different going into the 8S, the naked bike. So I, you know, Suzuki kind of did a great job with this new engine. I think it's gonna work well in both platforms. Certainly did in the V-Strom 800 DE. So that pretty much wraps it up for our first ride of the V-Strom 800 DE for 2023. Looking forward to getting this bike back home in California to do a little bit more testing, a little more long-term testing. Obviously, two days of riding doesn't tell you everything about the bike. Having it for a little bit longer, maybe getting it out for a test against some of the other popular bikes is uh, definitely on the docket for us. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, we definitely want to thank MMI, the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute, for uh, sponsoring these videos. MMI is a school for motorcycle enthusiasts who want to get into the industry, and uh, you can learn more about that with the link above. You know, if, if it's something that you're interested in, it's a great way to learn more and get your feet wet into the industry and learn, obviously, how to work on all sorts of cool bikes these days. Um, I think that pretty much wraps it up, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, and definitely head on over to Motorcycle.com for the full write-up uh, where you can read my thoughts after I'm not quite as jet-lagged and uh, get the full spec sheet, all that breakdown there. And uh, thanks for watching.